During the current pandemic, we are all finding ways to respond to this new reality of social distancing and virtual connections. And many of us has found solace in the arts, whether it be through drawing, painting, listening to music, reading the work of an author, or watching endless hours of television and film. For those of us in the arts and cultural field, the loss of in-person experiences and communion hits hard. Ever creative, artists and arts organizations are finding ways to maintain connection and share the profound joys that bind us together through creation and participation. Since we cannot be together and say bravo to all the achievements and contributions our arts organizations have made in the past year, the Tippecanoe Arts Federation wishes to recognize the hard work of its fiscal year 2021 Regional Initiative Grant Award recipients. Hi, I'm Sarah Mummy, Executive Director of the Lafayette Symphony. The LSO provides a variety of live concert experiences from full orchestra to small ensemble speaking to almost any musical taste, as well as education and outreach programs which reach as many as 6,000 students in up to 14 counties throughout central Indiana every season. This season we will be applying our IAC funds toward keeping artists and professionals employed and to creating some cool, interesting online programming to share with you. I'm Don Huey, Executive Director at the Long Center. We are a performing arts venue, home to several resident artistic companies. This past year, we added a venue, the Lafayette Theater. Our goal with uh, all of our grant funding, and especially our uh, funds from TAF and Indiana Arts Commission, uh, is to allow us to um, continue inviting local artists to perform in our theater. Without that funding, uh, we're simply an empty building. In 2021, uh, the Long Center is going to celebrate its 100th anniversary. Um, When we opened in 1921, we were known as the Mars Theater, and we are looking forward to a big celebration in 2021, 100 years of serving the community. And we invite everyone, everyone in the state, uh, to come join us in that big celebration. Arts are essential here. They speak to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits, in a way that not uh, many other things do. So with the grant from the Indiana Arts Commission, we have been able to implement a artist in residency program. Our first artist is musician Denise Wilson, and she will be with us for a whole year. So she comes to visit our friends twice a month. And so with our friends that may be experiencing cognitive or mobility challenges, she knows the right approach to really get them engaged. And it's interactive, and that's what we need here. The great thing about the Artist in Residency program is that with our friends' challenges, getting out into the community and seeing art where it lives can be difficult. So um, by having the artist in residency program, we can actually bring those quality arts experiences into our house and um, bring it to our friends in a way that they can really enjoy. So LTHC is happy to be a recipient of the Indiana Arts Commission grants for the second year in a row. We have used these dollars in our partnership with TAF to give voice to our guests so that people who are experiencing homelessness can tell their own story through art. So we actually use it for projects around what we call Voices of Homelessness that have provided opportunities for um, currently homeless or formerly homeless folks to use photography, poetry, um, and other sorts of just multimedia art expression to document or journal what their experience in homelessness has been like Um, and that is a cathartic experience for them to tell their story in a healing sort of way but also very powerful in telling the community what it's like and what um, what they can do and what they can learn from uh, you know experiencing that artistic expression Our staff works really hard to communicate to the public who we are and what we do, but there's no better messenger of the experience of homelessness than the folks who are living it every day. And so to give um, an opportunity for the voices of homelessness to speak, that is amazing and we're super grateful. 
is uh, the preservation of tra traditional roots music, and we wanted to figure out a way to make that ac as accessible as we possibly could. So, uh, with a few phone calls to some friends of ours, uh, to professional studio musicians all around the world, we were able to bring them in, and we're going to be offering a online introduction to music class series uh, starting at the end of September and we'll run for five weeks and uh, this is all free online stuff and you can catch it all at webashay.com. We get to experience their knowledge and, and we get to impart that on the community and, and it's make it, making it available to the community for free is wonderful so we're really excited about that. Our healing art program was started in March of 2018 by one of our full-time advocates, Rachel Reynolds, um, now Rachel Price. And it started in the basement of shelter. Rachel recognized that there was a need um, for creative expression for our survivors. And she wanted to do that in a way that would encourage them to work through and process their trauma. Um, we will be able to continue offering um, free healing art workshops to the community and to our survivors. We will be able to purchase high quality art supplies including Prismacolor colored pencils, oil paints, canvases, um, glass stones, things for collage, you name it. Um, we will be able to hold our second annual Survivors Gallery this year, where we can showcase the artwork of our members who have participated in our workshops. We will be able to support survivors as they um, work toward creative expression on their own time. We can provide them with art supplies upon request and we will be able to um, further expand the healing art program so that we can support even more um, survivors of all types of trauma. Wabash Center hopes to use their art funds to continue to develop their art program. Currently we have arts and crafts available to about 150 adults with developmental disabilities and special needs. And uh, we would like to be able to offer more individualized opportunities um, instead of uh, you know having to do a, a one-size-fits-all sort of... Hi, I'm Michael Bennett, Artistic Director. And I'm Cindy Gerlach, the Managing Director. Of the Lafayette Master Choral and Children's Choir. The Lafayette Master Choral dates back to 1964 when the Bach Choral Singers formed to offer citizens in the community an opportunity to sing and perform high quality choral music. In the 1990s, we added the Tippecanoe Youth Chorus and the, La the Greater Lafayette Children's Choir. We now have a total of four ensembles, one for adults and three for children, allowing citizens of the community an opportunity to sing and perform choral music in all genres. We are so appreciative of the support of the Indiana Arts Commission. Without their financial contributions, we would not be able to function. I'm Kendall Smith. I'm the executive director of the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette. Well, in normal times, we offer uh, live studio art classes. They're going virtual now, as everything is. So this fall, we're encouraging our, our faculty members to uh, create ways to engage uh, students online. In addition to studio art classes, we have a a docent team who guide people through the exhibitions and give them information about the works that are on exhibit. We've been fortunate enough to receive grants from the Indiana Arts Commission for probably 30 years. We really appreciate the, the work that the commissioners do to try to support the cultural organizations in our community. Without that support, uh, we'd have a really tough time uh, continuing with our program. I'm Kara Rawlings. I'm the executive director of the Indiana Fiddlers Gathering. And the Indiana Fiddlers Gathering is an organization that works to preserve traditional music through education and performances. The grant dollars allow us to provide as many programs as we possibly can for free to the community. So that lets us continue to do work outside of the festival um, throughout the year and host musicians and support musicians and support um, people who want to be me. My name is Raquel Lopez. I am the Producing Artistic Director for Civic Theater Greater Lafayette. Uh, Civic Theater was founded in 1931, so we will be celebrating 90 years in Lafayette as the only community theater in town. We have a huge educational uh, program that serves youths from the ages of 5 through 18, and we produce four youth shows per year. We also produce five main stage shows, 
Right now, what we're trying to do, uh, specifically in the last couple of years, is even broaden our reach even more, try to get across the river, get more students to come over. Uh, we are a huge advocate of diversity and inclusion, so uh, our motto, see yourself here, applies to everyone, and we want everyone in the community to feel comfortable inside our doors. Hi, this is Steve Hughes, the Executive Director of Kokomo Civic Theater, with a look at our 1920 season, which was our 70th season. We started off with the musical, Mamma Mia, followed by the best Christmas pageant ever, and then the drama, The Velocity of Autumn. We also presented a concert of Rodgers and Hammerstein classics with the Kokomo Symphony Orchestra before our season was cut short by the pandemic. We would like to thank the Tippecanoe Arts Federation and the Indiana Arts Commission for their support. I'm Keith Whitford, manager and a performing member of the Kokomo Park Band. Our concerts are offered free of charge, which means that uh, no matter what the financial means of uh, the people attending, they can afford to come and take part. We are extremely appreciative of the grant that we get through the Tippecanoe Arts Federation. Uh, this Indiana Arts Commission grant affords us the ability to, uh, to do our entire concert series with a full-size concert band and to reach a great number of people. From the response we've got, um, uh, people really, really need the arts, especially in difficult times. And hopefully we've been able to do a small part to uh, satisfy some of that desire. The symphony provides four or five grams a year for the community. We try to bring live symphonic music to the community. We provide scholarships for and programs for students so that they can learn strings. The grants have been great. They help with our scholarships for students. They help to pay for three to four instructors during the year. These organizations and other arts practitioners continue to reach underserved communities and inspire over half a million Hoosiers with artistic opportunities and educational experiences. We hope that you will join us in recognizing the power of the arts and the work of the many arts and cultural providers in our region.